Hi everybody and welcome to this new episode of our Danzo Tech Academy video tutorial serial. So today I would like to talk about the demo software which is coming with our SP1 RFID reader and I would like to focus especially on the RFID settings influencing the RFID performance. So let's go to the workshop and start. Welcome to the workshop. For today's demonstration, I have prepared an SP1 and a BHD1800 running the demo application coming with the SP1 SDK. Today I would like to talk a bit about the demo application and especially focus on the SP1 RFID settings. So let's have a look at the application. As you see, my SP1 is already connected to the BHD1800. So the initial pairing and connection process has already been done. and um, yeah, let's start and have a look at the settings of the application. So if we start up the settings of the application, what it does is acquiring the settings from the SP1. And we see here, first thing we see is the battery status of the SP1 and the scanner software version on the SP1. As well, we see the read power level. The read power level can be adjusted um, between values between 4 and 30. So um, this is uh, means that, that running on 30 we have the maximum output power and going down to 4 we have the minimum output power for reading tags. So if we only read one single tag just close to the antenna then we set it to 4. If we want to read all the tags which are around us with a maximum reading distance then of course we should set it to a level of 30. So I will adjust it to the level of 30 so nothing has changed. The session is related to the tag session. So if we set the device to session 0, that means that every tag is always answering if it is receiving a trigger signal, a wave signal from the SP1 reader. With the session we can control if the tags are always answering or maybe um, keep quiet for a certain amount of time. So let's say we do an inventory and we have a uh, thousands of tags uh, around us and uh, we want to make sure that we read the tags always once and that we don't get too many interferences from the tags, we can adjust the session to a different level. So we see we have different session levels here from session 0 up to session 3. If we put it to session 2 or 3, then this means that the tags are keeping quiet for quite a while and not responding to trigger waves they receive from the reader. But for our testing purposes, we would leave it to session 0. Anti-reread will tell the device to filter out and only report back tags which have not already been scanned. So if we only have one tag here around us, and uh, we uh, enable the anti-reread, then we get only one tag listed back. If we disable the anti-reread, then this tag is read every time, and every time we get this tag reported back as a newly read tag. Then, of course, we have the channel settings, where the channel settings are different from different regions. So in Europe, we have four channels which we can select from. Um, in other regions, like in the US or Japan, we might have different uh, amount of channels which we can select on. The Q factor setting is something in the in the chip mod module, in the RFID module, um, which is influencing based on a random value in which time slots the tags are replying back. The default value for our reader is the Q factor set to 4 and we can leave this in any time um, because the chipset internally is adjusting the Q factor. If there is a lot of tags around then the chipset is recognizing this and slightly adjusting the Q factor as well, so the random value as well. The link profile. The link profile mainly has impact on the reading speed. So our default value here is link profile 2. We can select 1, 2, 4 and 5. Choosing 2 for demonstration purposes is quite good. If we change the link profile, this could have an impact on the reading speed. So if the speed is not important for us, but uh, we want to make sure that we read the text um, as good as possible, then we can adjust the link profile as well. These settings are very 
deeply related to all the RFID technology and specifications. So this is probably a topic for, for a different tutorial um, where we go a bit more deeper into this. Um, for the demonstration purposes, I would leave the link profile to two. Um, you can start playing around with it and see the different effects if you choose different link profiles with the demo application easily. The polarization means the antenna polarization. So um, we have two antennas which are um, polarized. Uh, one is vertically, one is horizontally. And if we use both polarization, which we usually do in demonstration purposes, then um, the polarization is switching between the horizontal and the vertical on a regular base. So um, using a, a horizontal po polarization or a vertical polarization could increase the reading distance, but then we have to make sure that the antenna of the tag is having a certain orientation related to the antenna of the reading device. With a power save mode, we can, what the name says, increase the power saving of the device. So if uh, we are not satisfied with the battery operating time, then we can switch on the power save mode, but this power save mode then as well has an effect on the reading speed. So if we're focusing on reading speed, then uh, we should switch off the power save. If uh, we're focusing on a longer battery lifetime, then we can uh, enable the power save mode. Then we have control of the trigger mode. So by default, we use continuous reading mode. So the moment I activate the reading on my device, I don't need to press the trigger key um, on the SP1 to start the reading. It immediately starts reading. I can select here different reading modes. So um, momentary reading mode means that the device is only reading if I press the trigger switch. This is commonly used as well in some cases, but we will stick with the continuous reading mode for our tests now. Um, buzz of uh, active or not, so this means if the device is beeping every time it reads, so the beeping could get annoying of course, so we can switch it off and on, we can adjust the, the volume and then we have some settings for the barcode, built-in barcode scanner of the device. We can control the trigger mode and enable 1D codes or 2D codes or only 2D codes and so on and so on. So um, what I would like to do is to show you how many tags I have around me here. Um, I will enable the anti-reread. So the moment I now do a scanning for the tags, this would mean that every tag is only reads once and reported back to the application once. So I get the information how many tags I have around me here. So if we go back to the top screen, you see the node. So the settings have been now transferred to the SP1 and now are stored inside the SP1. So if I switch off the application and start it again, connect it again, the settings are still in the device and the settings are still applied. So what I would like to do now is I would like to do an inventory. So I would like to know how many tags do I have around. I simply start the reading and that's it. So we see here the red LED, the red mode LED, is that the, the RFID reader is still on and is still sending radio waves to the tags. Um, oh, there is another tag coming up, uh, which is probably somewhere around here. So we see we have 10 tags somewhere around here. I stop the reading. I have the 10 tags in the list and I see the EPC values of the tags. I can clear this, go back. What I would like to do now to show you the difference is I go into the settings, I switch off the anti-reread, go back, and I will do the inventory again and start it again. And we see um, now um, it's continuing to read the text. If I move around slightly, then uh, still texts are recognized. Uh, they are located here in front of me um, and there is uh, probably a continuous reading of the different tags. And we see if we check the, if we check the list here, we have three tags in this area which have the same EPC. So tags are now showing up 
not only once, but uh, several times in the list of the text we have read. Good. Compare master is something where I first have to select a master data file. Then based on this master data file, which I can select here, um, let's see, I have prepared a file earlier today. So a file containing eight tags inside. And now I'm using this master data file with information of the eight tags, which I want to have in, let's say, in the delivery or um, wherever, let's say I receive a box with items and I get an information, a CSV file containing the information which items I should be in the box. And to double check if this is correct, I can simply start the reading and we see we have the actual eight red and um, which are in the in the file and uh, but we have one tag listed here which is not in the file. That's the compare master application. Um, rapid read. Yeah, for rapid read, I need to adjust the settings because if I do the rapid read, um, no, I don't need to because I have switched off the anti reread already. So this is uh, good um, because when doing the rapid read, I want to read any tag I want to have. So I start the rapid read, I start it now, and we see we're reading the tags quite fastly. You hear the beeping, so we see the information here, how many tags we have read in for uh, or almost five seconds. Then I have some functionality for setting filters. I can uh, go inside here and say, okay, I want to filter on this bank with this bit offset, offset and we want to have a certain pattern um, where it should start with. This is quite complicated because we need to know first, uh, we need to have the information, what is the EPC value inside the tag so that we can filter on this one. So we need to have information on the tags first. But usually if we have our products, we know our tags, we know what tags manufacturers we have. Um, and if we want to filter certain tags, let's say only we want to only see our tags and not tags from from other products, let's say we have a store-in-store store situation where we have our own tags and then we have tags from other brands. So then in this case, we can start pre, uh, we can use the filter. We can set a filter on the device and then make sure that only the tags which we want to see are showing up in the list. Locate tag is a simple tag search function. So for this function, I first need to uh, register one tag which I want to search for. I have a tag here now. So what I, what I would like to do is I want to say read the tag. Okay, and uh, so this is my tag. When I start the read tag, what the application is doing, it is reducing the output power on the SP1 so that only the tag which is really close here is reading this. Um, I have some other tags around here laying on the table um, and uh, these are not registered now. So I want to search for this certain tag. Uh, let's put it there and the others there. And now I would like to start the search and see it's pretty loud. And if I go closer to the tag, um, I, I immediately see this. If I move away from the tag, the sound is going down. So this is a very simple search function which we can use to locate one single tag with the SP1. Um, of course, barcode reading. We can do barcode reading. We set uh, trigger mode on barcode reading. So if I start, the device is beeping. Now what it does, it changed the mode from RFID reading to barcode reading. And if I press the trigger now, I can scan the barcode here on my attack. And the barcode information is showing up in the demo screen. Good, going back. Yeah, that's pretty much all at the moment we can say about the demo application. You say it's a simple demo application, but it's showing um, almost any aspect uh, of the functionality which is possible with the SP1. And uh, as already said, the demo application is coming with the SDK, it's coming with the source code. So this is a, a quite good uh, base for starting the development. So 
I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer as soon as possible. Or send us a message. You can find our contact details in the description below as well. If you want to see more video tutorials from the Danzo Tech Academy or other video content from Danzo, check out our channel. Or subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you very much and bye bye.